Hi, and welcome back. Today, we're going to have a look at phase modulation, an interesting variation to the more common frequency modulation. For this, we're using the LA67TZ, a fully analog oscillator featuring through zero phase modulation. In this video, I'll quickly explain phase modulation, go over the functions and features of the TZ, and then dive into a series of patches. If you'd like to support this video series, or you want to get access to the PDF sheets of the illustrations I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. As always, you can use the timeline to navigate to a specific section. But now, let's dive right in. To explain phase modulation, I'm going to get a bit technical but I promise I'll keep it short. You can visualize the generation of a sine wave by the movement of a point around a circle. When the point moves one time around the circle, the sine wave completes one full cycle. Of course, in an oscillator, this process loops on forever and with much higher frequency than visualized here. At any given point though, the phase is the angle between the start point and the point on the waveform. As time moves on, the phase advances naturally. When applying phase modulation, for example with another sine wave, the phase is modulated back and forth relative to the position where it would have been without modulation, effectively changing the rate with which the point moves around the circle. Of course, this can be done subtly or with more drastic effects. I'm not going to lie, visualizing the waveforms that are the result of that is above my pay grade. But more importantly, it sounds like this. I'm not going to lie about something else either. The difference between phase modulation and frequency modulation isn't a difference like night and day, more like the difference between exponential and linear frequency modulation, but offering an interesting third flavor that's worth exploring. Before we go into some patches, let's have a closer look at the TZ oscillator. The TZ is a clear and spacious laid out oscillator. The small knob here sets the coarse frequency, and this big one is used for fine tuning. There's also a switch to set the oscillator to regular high mode or LFO low mode. At the top, you can find all outputs, offering all the classic analog waveforms as well as a wave shape output. That output can be set manually with this knob, smoothly morphing from sine to triangle to saw wave. You can also use an external voltage to modulate the wave shape, and that input has its own attenuator right here. Among the inputs on the bottom, there is a 1V per octave input, as well as a hard sync input. And then there is the phase modulation section. The labeling was slightly confusing to me at first, but this is how it works. You can modulate the phase of the TZ with external voltages, using this input called mod in. The knob called mod index here acts as a unipolar attenuator for those incoming voltages. In addition, you can send external control voltages to the index input to change the amount of phase modulation relative to the mod index setting. The index input comes with its own bipolar attenuator called index CV. So for example, you can keep the mod index closed and use a regular envelope to temporarily increase the amount of phase modulation. Or 
you can open the amount of phase modulation manually and use the attenuverter to have that same envelope reduce the amount of modulation. This setup offers a lot of control over modulation within the module itself, making dynamic modulation very easy without the immediate need for an external VCA. Let's start with a few patches using another oscillator to modulate the phase of the TZ. During the phase modulation explanation, I showed a few sounds. Those were the direct outputs of the TZ modulated with a single oscillator. In this setup, four factors influence the character of the sound. The amount of phase modulation set manually on the TZ, the frequency and waveform used to modulate the phase, and of course, the waveform output of the TZ itself. You can expand the setup to a simple voice by sending the oscillator through a filter and VCA. Then use a sequencer to tune the TZ and trigger a simple envelope to open the filter and VCA. Subtle modulation amounts will result in subtle textures. Strong modulation with harsher waveforms can be interesting for more metallic, experimental and percussive sounds. A lot of tonal textures can be achieved when the oscillator used to modulate the phase is tuned and sequenced as well. You can multiply the 1V per octave signal going to the TZ and use it to sequence the modulating oscillator. With the TZ offering wave shape modulation as well, you can easily increase the sonic variations over time. For example, by sending a slow LFO or random voltage to the shape input. The index input functions as a VCA to control the amount of phase modulation. With the attached bipolar attenuator, it's easy to dial in the right amount of modulation. You can create interesting drones and textures by sending a random voltage to the index. You can expand the depth by sending another random voltage to the frequency of the modulating oscillator and mold that signal to the filter as well. Of course, the same concept applies to the voice we used before. Just add a slow LFO or random voltage to create subtle changes in texture over time. You can create interesting tempo synced variations to this by multiplying the clock from the sequencer to a clock divider and then use the division to trigger an envelope or sample and hold signal for example. Again, you can multiply that signal and send it to the filter for some added depth. The Index CV gives you the option to add a lot of harmonics to your waveforms without other wave shapers or filters. In this simple setup, a sequencer is used to tune both the TZ and the modulating oscillator. It also triggers a simple envelope to open the VCA. You can multiply that envelope and send it to the index to control the phase modulation amount and, if you like, even to the shape input as well to create harsher sounds.
Beyond the basic modulation of the mod and index, it's worth it to experiment with more complex setups. Here are a few ideas. You can expand on the previous setup by combining more than one modulation source. Besides using the gate from the sequence, use the steady clock from the sequencer to trigger a second envelope with different settings. Then use a mixer to mix different amounts of those envelopes together before going to the VCA, shape and index. Tweaking the mixer by hand will give some interesting performance options. Let's go back to a drone setup, sending the TZ through a filter again. To create slowly changing sounds over time, add an oscillator to the mod input, a slow random voltage to the index, an LFO to the shape input and, for extra taste, another slow random voltage to the filter. You can alter this patch and add interesting tempo sync modulation again by replacing the random voltage for a mixer and use a clock and clock divider to trigger two different envelopes. Mix them together with the random voltage and use them on the index as well as the filter. Despite the build-in VCA, it can be worth it to experiment with more modulation before modulating the index. In this basic setup, for example, you can send another copy of the envelope to an external VCA before going on to the index. Then you can modulate the amount of envelope passing on by sending something like a random voltage to that VCA. To add some extra dynamics, modulate the decay of the envelope with another random voltage. Having multiple waveform outputs gives you the possibility to easily make stereo patches. This sounds great with phase modulation. For example, take the square output to one filter and the saw output to another. Use an oscillator for phase modulation, a random voltage to the modulation amount and something like another random voltage to modulate both filters for some extra movement. Finally, it's worth it to explore modulating with multiple audio rate signals at the same time. For example, use another oscillator to modulate the wave shape, the index or sync input. All of these patches can be tried with frequency modulation as well. But like I said in the beginning, I do think phase modulation offers an interesting new flavor, especially if you're interested in detailed sound design, for which the modular is exceptionally suitable. If you'd like to learn more about things like frequency shifting or alternates to VCAs, have a look at any of these videos. And smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.